Civil 3D users who are using Civil Site Design are able to create Civil 3D surfaces and have Civil Site Design recognize those. In the previous videos, we've created the natural surface using Surface Manager and used CAD objects on particular layers to create that surface. In this particular version of the project, we've actually created a Civil 3D surface. So I'm just going to pop to Tool Space and you can see we have a surface called NS. And in definition, we have drawing objects being used to define the surface. And this just happens to be the same 3D faces that we used to create the Civil Site Design surface. If we go to Surface Manager, you'll see that we don't have an NS listed in the project. Now we have created another surface to show you how the Civil 3D surface interacts. It's important that we don't have two surfaces in the project, both with the same name. So do not go into tool space and create a surface called NS and then go into Civil Site Design Surface Manager and also create an NS. We have created some tools to help you exchange surfaces between the different platforms. There may be a case where you would want to take, say for example, a volume between the grading string surface that we've created here and the Civil 3D surface in the background. This is not currently possible with the software because both surfaces are created on entirely different platforms. So we need to make sure that they're either both on Civil 3D or both in Civil Site Design. To show you how this works, what we're going to do is export this particular grading string surface, which we will be creating later on, to Civil 3D. So we're going to close down Surface Manager. On the Roads tab, Modeling Panel, there is a Civil 3D Surfaces pull-down. If you go ahead and click on the top button, which is Civil 3D Surfaces, in there we are able to export surfaces to Civil 3D. Now, these surfaces need to have break lines. So if we had a surface that contained just 3D faces, and sent it to Civil 3D, the software would not be able to do the conversion. However, this is a Civil Site Design surface created from a string. We can go and export it. So we're going to go ahead and check the basin and click OK. Immediately, in Toolspace, a brand new surface has been created, which is a snapshot of that particular surface in Surface Manager. And you can see we've actually prefixed it with C3D. This is to prevent duplication of surface names in the project. If we wanted to hand a surface to Civil Site Design, we could simply use the following tool, which is in the same pull down, which is called Civil 3D to Civil Site Design. Now, what we might want to do is to give the natural surface over to Civil Site Design. So I'm going to uncheck the basin and click on Convert Surfaces. You'll have seen in the drawing environment there was an immediate change. So if I go to Surface Manager, and click on the pull down, you'll now see we have a copy of the NS now being used by Civil Site Design. And again, we've prefixed it to prevent any duplication of naming. Now, as a Civil 3D user, you have the choice of creating the NS in Civil Site Design or the NS in Civil 3D. There is no particular preference, but certainly going forward, once you begin to get into things like Model Builder, or even wanting to undertake volume calculations, having all the surfaces in the one platform can be very helpful. Lastly, we can also share surfaces using XML. So what I'm going to do is click on the GR Basin. Then over to the right-hand side of the form, we can click on Export XML. I'm going to check GR Basin and then click OK. It's going to ask us if we want to open up the folder where this particular file has just been created. So we're going to say yes. There's our file. So what I'm going to do is now import that into Civil 3D. So I'm going to go to the Insert tab, Land XML, then find the file, select the file and click on Open. And then I'm going to click OK. As soon as we exchange surfaces via XML, there's no renaming process. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go into surface properties here and make sure that I rename it with a different name to any other name that's been created. So I'm just going to put XML at the end here and then click OK. 
So this particular lesson is really just to show the Civil 3D users how you can exchange services between the two platforms.